What's up everyone, Takedown here, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the top games that I have played in 2019. Let's get right into it. So for this video, it's not necessarily games that came out in 2019, some of them came out before 2019, but they're the games that I played the most of in the past year. So up first is Apex Legends, which is one of my favorite Battle Royale video games. I used to play a lot of Fortnite last year, and I completely stopped because basically I burnt myself out on the game, but whenever I started playing Apex Legends, whenever it came out on the PlayStation Store, Right off the bat, it's a lot of fun. It's a different pace of game. It's a lot of fun. You get to choose which legend you want to be. And I thought that was a cool aspect to the Battle Royale video games. I did manage to get a couple wins on it. I did stop playing it for a couple months, but have started picking it back up here and there in Season 3, because that's the current season for the game. So Apex Legends is a lot of fun. It's a Battle Royale-style game. And honestly, I prefer it over any other Battle Royale game that I've played. Next up is Battlefield 5, which I am a huge fan of Battlefield now. I prefer Battlefield over Call of Duty because over the past few years, Call of Duty has been going more into a futuristic style. And I honestly hate futuristic video games whenever it comes to shooters. So I, whenever Battlefield 1 came out, I picked it up instead of Call of Duty that year. And for me, I'm sticking with Battlefield from now on because I just prefer that style of maps, that, that style of gameplay of if I want to be a sniper with the huge maps in Battlefield, I can actually do that. Battlefield 1 was set in World War 1, which I love the history and the historic facts that they brought into the game and the campaign was amazing. So when Battlefield 5 was coming out, I was 100% on board with it because it was set in World War 2. Honestly, the campaign of the game was a lot of fun. It was very interesting. It had really good depth of the story because it takes actual war stories of things that actually happened and they brought them over into a video game. So I thought that was really cool. It's not like Call of Duty where they create an original story based on that time period. Battlefield actually took real war stories and brought them into the game. So I thought that was a really cool aspect. Everything from the guns to the scenery to the locations of the games for the maps and everything are spot on to the time period it's a lot of fun online is amazing my favorite is i believe it's called conquest and it's basically like a 30 minute huge team deathmatch combined with um i can't remember what it is on call of duty but where you have to capture almost like capture the flag so different locations, so if you have more locations, that means you have more areas to spawn in. You get to pick your spawn locations whenever you die in Battlefield, which I really like. And everything about Battlefield to me is superior over Call of Duty. It's just something I'm more into now, and it is a lot of fun. So Battlefield 5, I did play a lot of. I keep playing it, but because they are kind of longer matches, what I'm into with it, which is Conquest, which I just mentioned, I don't have too much time these days other than my off days from work to play Battlefield 5. Next up is Far Cry New Dawn, which I'm a huge fan of Far Cry now. I first got Far Cry 5, which Far Cry New Dawn is a continuation of that game. With the events at the end of Far Cry 5, that is basically where Far Cry New Dawn starts off. New Dawn was originally supposed to be DLC for Far Cry 5. However, it was such a huge DLC, they decided to release it as its own game, as they should have, and I'm glad that they did, but if you got Far Cry New Dawn expecting it to be a full-length game like Far Cry games usually are, you might have been a little disappointed, but for me, since it was not the full price of a brand new video game like other games are for me in Canada, it's $80. Far Cry New Dawn was around $50, so it was cheaper. It is a little bit of a shorter game, but it is a continuation from Far Cry 5. So if you remember the events of Far Cry 5 of how it ended, how the world basically turned into a apocalyptic style game, which I'm really into, that's where New Dawn took off, and it was kind of a the same scenery and everything that happened in the previous game. However, it's with a different group of people that are trying to survive now. So I thought it was a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed this game. I got a platinum out of it. So if you're into platinums, I definitely would recommend Far Cry New Dawn and also Far Cry 5. But I honestly had a lot of fun with this game this past year. Next up is Detroit Become Human, which was a free game for the PS Plus, I believe, over this past summer. I really wanted it whenever it first came out. However, I was getting so many other games because I was used to getting certain games. 
I just didn't have the funds available to purchase this game whenever it first came out. So whenever I seen it was free for PS Plus, I jumped on it right away. The story for Detroit Become Human is really in-depth. It's a character choosing game, uh, sorry, a choice choosing game. So you have three main characters and you get to make your choices along the way of what you want to happen. And based on your choices, the choices that you make actually matter. So one of the main characters, you could get killed off early in the game and you have to do another playthrough to see what happens with that character later on. The decisions that you make truly do matter and they affect the entire game. You could have people start hating you, you could have people become your friends. So it's a lot of fun. The story is amazing. Next up is Batman Arkham Knight. Now this game I think originally came out in 2015 if I'm not mistaken, but it was free for PS Plus in I believe September. I got it, it was a lot of fun. It basically had the mechanics and similarity of Spider-Man, which came out on a PlayStation 4 and I believe December 2018. It was a lot of fun. The story is amazing. The main story follows Scarecrow, which I thought was really interesting and it was really in depth. It had a great story for the main uh, storyline of the game. The side missions were very interesting. You had the Penguin, Two-Face, Riddler, which was really in depth. But the only thing I didn't like about the Riddler missions is once you finish Riddler and you come to the end to where you're trying to face him, he wants you to finish off all of the riddles in Gotham before you can actually face him and defeat him. And there's 250 riddles throughout the city. So I decided to pass on that. But there's so many side missions. There's Firefly missions, a serial killer, a lot of militia missions. So there's a lot to do in this game. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm honestly taking a break from it right now because I have completed the main story. I've completed a lot of the quests, the side quests, and I had a lot of fun with it. I've just slowly been getting burnt out on the game, so I'm taking a short break, but it is a lot of fun and I would recommend it if it is cheap or low on price because I know it's not free right now. It's definitely a lot of fun. Next up is Ghostbusters Remastered. This came out originally on the PlayStation 3 and they decided to remaster it. I literally purchased it for $40, which is the full price of the game, a month after it came out. Honestly, I would recommend getting it at price drop for hopefully around $20 or $30 whenever that does happen, maybe over the holidays, because I honestly feel it was a great game. I had a lot of fun with it, but the story is so short. The levels, I think there's less than 10 levels that you can go and beat, and they don't take relatively too long to do so, but the story and the gameplay is a lot of fun. It does have kind of like PS3 graphics and gameplay and mechanics, but... It is a fun game. I really enjoyed it. I'm almost finished. I have two levels left and then I've complete the main story. And then I'm going to go back and play it again just to clean up a lot of my trophies because there's a lot of trophies that I missed. So I'm going to play it maybe one or two more times to complete run through. I've actually been streaming it on the channel back whenever I was playing it more. It is a lot of fun. I definitely would recommend it. However, I'd wait for it to be like a 20 or $30 whenever it drops in price or it's on sale over the holidays. Next up is Project Cars, which... Whenever it was on sale, I decided to purchase it because I think it was only $6 and I think it was the complete edition. What I like about Project Cars, uh, I was a fan of uh, Gran Turismo Sports. That game's a lot of fun. You get to actually purchase your vehicles in that game. But Project Cars, as far as I know because I've been playing it, you can't go and purchase your vehicles yourself and own the vehicle. But you can go and choose the paint job of the vehicle prior to your races. The career mode is really in depth. You can actually sign a contract with an actual team and then go and play throughout seasons of whatever contract you purchase. So you start off if you want tier one, I believe, and it's go-karts and then it's super karts and then it's different race classes leading up to the eighth and final one. There's a lot of trophies that you can get. It's a lot of fun. I honestly enjoy that game. And it's not too hard of a racing game. Some racing games are pretty tricky. This game's actually a lot of fun to play and it doesn't take long to get used to it. Now you do have to, because it's a closed course, you do have to basically follow the rules and it gives you a guideline of when you should be braking and when you should be accelerating. 
but it isn't too hard to pick up and it is honestly a fun racing game. And the last game that I want to mention is NHL 20. I only ever purchase NHL video games every two years. The last one that I bought was NHL 18, so it came time for me to get NHL 20. I actually went to Walmart looking for other stuff, happened to stumble upon the games, and they actually had it priced wrong. This was almost a month after it came out. So games over here in Canada, like I already mentioned, are around $80 brand new, and they had it priced at $60. So they had it priced wrong. I checked their website. It's supposed to be $80. So I actually purchased it and they had to give it to me for $60. So number one, I got a huge discount on a brand new game. So I thought that was awesome. And the improvements of this game compared to prior years were right up my alley. I usually mainly play GM mode, which I'm a huge fan of because I like to have control over my franchise. And I actually go and make a brand new team and basically do an expansion draft and the whole nine yards. That's what I really like to do. But I also play career mode as well. The advancements that they made for NHL 20, number one, the scouts and the coaching staff you have full control over. So you can hire your scouts, you can hire your coaches and everything like that. You can fire them. So you have more control over your staff than you did in prior games. You can actually go for the stats of each player on your team and see not only what they their stats were for prior years, but you get to actually see what teams they were on for prior years, which for me is very important because if they were on a team that had a whole bunch of left wings and they were a left winger, maybe they weren't being used as often. So their stats for those years were very low. And let's say they got traded away to another team and their stats started to improve. Maybe that year they were actually getting used a lot more so they could actually prove what they could do on the ice. So for me, seeing what team they were on is very important. Maybe they had, maybe they were on the team that they didn't like. So that for me is very important. You can actually do a lot more in this game. It's a lot of fun. I've actually been enjoying playing it and starting off my team, which I every year for starting at NHL 18. Now I've been making the Hamilton Warriors. That's my main team. It's basically navy blue, silver, and black are the colors. It's honestly a lot of fun to play franchise mode. That's basically the GM mode of the game. I really enjoy GM modes of any sports game, NBA, WWE, back like 10 years ago whenever they had it in the WWE games. So NHL 20, I've been having a blast with. It's a lot of fun and it's nice to relax either before my shift, whenever I work night shifts, or sometimes even on my off days just to go and play a couple games. It's a lot of fun. So these are the top games that I've played in 2019. None of them are necessarily games that came out in 2019, but the ones that I've played in 2019 that I want to mention that I played the most of and enjoyed throughout the most of the year. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Comment down below what games you have played this past year that you would love me to try out and want to mention to me. Maybe they're games that I've played that either A, I just forgot about, didn't want to mention, or B, maybe they're games that I haven't tried out and maybe by you mentioning it, will make me want to try out the game and purchase the game and see how I like it. So comment that down below. I'm going to leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.